Our topic for today is the Philippine Travel Tax. Travel tax is a levy imposed by the Philippine government on persons who are leaving the country irrespective of the place where the airline ticket is issued or the form and place of payment. Join us today as we showcase the Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority, the government agency administering the collection of Philippine travel tax. I am Dr. Victor B. Endriga, and this is Tax TV, a taxpayer's guide to Philippine taxation. The law imposing travel tax is Presidential Decree Number 1183, dated August 21, 1977, which consolidated the provisions on travel tax of Republic Act Number 1478 and 6141. The law was promulgated in line with the policy of the government to lessen the restrictions on foreign travels, simplify travel regulations, and at the same time, provide adequate funds for the government tourism program. Simplify the collection of travel tax and minimize tax avoidance. The tax is payable by all citizens of the Republic of the Philippines permanent resident aliens, and non-immigrant aliens who stayed for more than one year. A travel tax of 2,700 is imposed on passenger under first class passage and 1,620 for those traveling on economy passage. The travel tax shall be collected by the carrier or their agents issuing the tickets, and the carrier shall remit these collections to the Philippine Tourism Authority, now TSA. The Philippine government declares tourism as a necessary element of national economy and an industry of national interest, an importance which must be hastened to generate investments, foreign exchange, and employment for the Filipinos. The Department of Tourism is the executive department of the Philippine government responsible for the regulation of the tourism industry and the promotion of the country's tourism destination. The Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Authority, or TESA, is an agency under the Department of Tourism, or DOT, responsible for implementing policies and programs of the department pertaining to development, promotion, and supervision of tourism projects in the Philippines. Republic Act 9593, or the Tourism Act 2009, is an act which declares a national policy for tourism as an engine of investment, employment, growth, and national development. The new law mandates TIESA to perform the following major functions, designation, regulation, and supervision of sustainable tourism enterprise zones development, management, and supervision of tourism infrastructure projects, provision of technical and financial assistance for qualified tourism projects, investors, and proponents. Through this law, the Philippines is being geared not only as a premier travel destination, but as potential investment haven 
for domestic and foreign investors. Tourism has become one of the top foreign exchange earners for 83% of developing countries and a leading export earners of one-third of the world's least developed countries. With its mandate to build tourism-related infrastructure and establish new tourism enterprise zones, PIESA plays an important role to enable the Philippine tourism industry to cope with the competition. This is Tax TV. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We have with us today Mr. Fidel M. Arsenas, Assistant Chief Operating Officer for Administrative and Finance of TIESA, accompanied by Mr. Florencio B. Arbenes, Manager of the Travel Tax Department. Sir, can you briefly discuss the mandate of TESA and its mission vision? Well, 10 years from now, we envision that uh, TESA shall have established sustainable tourism zones in key areas uh, as defined in the National Tourism Development Plan. Our strategy map uh, as required by the GCG, the Governance the Commission for GOCCs, uh, requires us to adopt the balance scorecard as the strategic management framework. So our strategic objectives uh, are also aligned with the sectoral goal of the Department of Tourism, which is to increase the contribution of the tourism industry to the economy. Uh, aside from that, we are also aligned, our strategic objectives are also aligned with the overriding goals of the national government, which is uh, poverty reduction, job creation, and uh, inclusive growth. Uh, in what year was uh, TESA established? The Republic Act, uh, otherwise known as the Tourism Act of 2009, was enacted in 2009. So this replaced the old PTA, which is now the TESA? Is that yes, the correct uh, interpretation? PTA, the Philippine Tourism Authority, uh, is the... So proposal. it's an attached agency of the Department of Tourism? Yes, sir. Uh, which is in, in charge mainly on infrastructure development of tourist-oriented uh, establishments? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so its mandate is likewise how to establish more tourist uh, infrastructures for the country. Correct, sir. Uh, yeah. TESA is in charge of collecting travel tax. Yes, now, the travel tax uh, is collected uh, by what manner and what is the allocation given the collection, the actual collections of travel tax? Well, the it depends, no. Uh, locally, for locally issued tickets, uh, travel tax uh, is being collected by the airlines or through the travel agencies. So direct from the airlines. The uh, you don't have any more separate counter for. We uh, have. Uh, you also have. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, for foreign issued and web issued tickets, uh, the passengers could pay the travel tax in you know, service counters, which are located in the international yeah. airports, in malls, uh, in one-stop yeah. shops. So right now, the travel tax is 1,620 for yes. Filipinos going abroad. Yes, sir. Uh, so based on that, how is it allocated? 50% uh, of the travel tax paid by passengers so goes, it goes to TESA. 40% of, of that uh, goes to CHED. Ah, CHED, so education, huh? yes. very important. <laughs> and 10% goes to the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. Ah, so this is where the travel tax goes. Yes. Uh, it, around how much is the actual collection on a yearly basis? Like uh, this year, your target is how much? The target this year is more than uh, 4 billion uh, total collection. Yeah, 2016, uh, the ta actual target is? To about 4.3 billion. 4.2 billion, sir. 4.2 billion. 4.2 billion. Yes, sir. And out of the 4.2 billion, do you think it is uh, reachable? Uh, yes, sir. As of now, we have, as of September 30, we have collected 3.6 billion. 
So more or less you're on target uh, for this year. Yes, sir. Uh, and your next year's target would be, of course, higher than that. Yes, sir. <laughs> Around how much would be your target for next year? 4.4, 4. Mm -hmm. 4, sir. So that is, uh, how about uh, with regard to, uh, so you could see here that there are four types of uh, travel tax. There is the travel tax full payment, and then you have tax refund. You also have travel tax exemption and reduced travel tax. Could you explain what uh, this four simply means? There are, I, I think there are 13 exemptions under these categories. Uh, yes, sir, there are 13 exemptions. Uh, we have the UN-funded trips of Filipinos. Uh, we have the permanent residence abroad, uh, like in the U.S., the green card holders. Uh, in Italy, the Carta di Soggiorno. And other countries have uh, various uh, permanent residency cards. They are exempted. Basically, sir, the uh, permanent residence abroad uh, comprise of 85% of uh, tax exemption certificates we issue annually. Uh, OFW, of course. OFWs are automatically exempted and they are, they either secure the overseas employment certificate from the POEA or uh, as of uh, September, the new issuance of POEA uh, in its board resolution the OFWs can now present a work vi valid work visa, valid work permit, valid contract, or some other documents. So these are the 13 exemptions granted by law. Yes. Uh, how about Filipinos holding dual citizenship or holding foreign passports? Uh, those hold holders of, Filip of foreign passports, yeah. like the American, the Canadian, and the like uh, are not covered by the travel tax law and uh -huh. uh, so uh, they just present their passports with the corresponding arrival stamp and uh, they are so they are given likewise exemptions even though they are holding foreign passports we no longer issue the travel tax exemptions ah, so you don't issue travel tax yeah. anymore just the presentation uh -huh. of the passport will do uh, can you say, Chair, uh, future infrastructures project being undertaken by TESA? The five-year tourism infrastructure development plan of TESA as approved by the Board of Directors uh, would take into consideration major uh, expenses for the establishment of flagship projects. Yeah. Uh, one flagship project that is now being uh, implemented is the one in San Vicente, Palawan. Ah, yeah, Palawan. What, the, what's the name of this? <laughs> the San Vicente, Palawan actually uh, boasts of a 17 kilometer beach, uh, white sand beach. White sand beach? Wow, yeah. 17 kilometers? Yes, bigger than oh, Boracay. Bigger than Boracay? <laughs> bigger than Boracay. So that's one of the areas where we will heavily invest on in the next uh, five years. Uh, another one is in Rizal Park. Ah. Uh, we wanted to revive the rich uh, heritage and history yeah. of Manila. And uh, we are implementing a flagship EC projects there. This is also ongoing. On the pipeline are three major flagship projects uh, of the TEC. Uh, the one in Bucas Grande, uh, in Socorro, Sorigao del Norte. Another one is in Mount Samat in Bataan. Uh, we are also looking at, uh, actually we are funding the master planning of uh, the TEC flagship project in uh, Pangalawa Bolt. So that's where most of our funds will be uh, expended in the next five years. How many tourists uh, does the Philippines receive from uh, on a yearly basis? Around the how many tourists? We've, we've reached actually the 5 million mark already. And uh, I think the projection of BOT is to increase this by another million yeah. uh, at the end of the year. 
the development in China augurs well for the increase in the number of tourists uh, since the, the, national, the Chinese government has lifted the travel restrictions to, to the country. So what do you think is the main problem? How come the Philippines does not attract so much tourists from, especially in the Southeast Asia region, I think we have the one left behind. Even uh, Vietnam, the tourist influx there really, I think we are already beaten by Vietnam in terms of tourist uh, arrivals. Competitiveness, we rank fifth, no? And this is where the challenge uh, comes in, no? Uh, if you look at the indices of the World Tourism, uh, the World Economic Forum Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Report, one of the indices there is ground support infrastructure and facilities. Yeah. This is the challenge uh, as far as the national government is concerned, that we need to really beef up uh, better and bigger uh, infrastructure and better facilities. Uh, to, to attract our uh, yes, to, tourists. To upgrade our absorptive capacity of tourists, like for example, you're targeting 10 million tourists in X number of years, but you have to, while we promote the Philippines as a prime destination, you should also be ready with the infrastructure to, like for example, uh, how do we uh, fare in terms of absorbing 10 million tourists in our hotels right yeah, now. Yeah. So that's one of the aspects that uh, we should look into. And Chiesa, through the establishment of this flagship key TECs, we are uh, hopefully more investors or locators will be coming in. We'll address this uh, Do you think with the president's gap. visit to China, it would uh, increase our tourist uh, influx? You know that uh, China is the biggest yes. population in the world with 1.3 billion population. Maybe we could get only a small chunk of that. We'll be going up. I think the president has already uh, given the go signal to really uh, attract uh, Chinese tourists to come into the country. Definitely the new relationship we have with the Chinese government uh, augurs well for the increase of uh, the number of Chinese tourists coming to the country. But more than that, I think once we open up the fiscal and uh, non-fiscal incentives for investments in tourism, just uh, as envisioned in 95-93, no? uh, where uh, foreign local investors could avail of fiscal incentives. I think more Chinese will be investing in tourism in the country. Yeah, yeah. Now, how important is the travel tax in tourism campaign? If you look at how much Chiesa is spending for tourism, infrastructure. Uh, you can imagine uh, the importance of travel tax. Uh, this is really how important travel tax is. No? Yes. Now, uh, right now, the slogan of the Philippines is, it's more fun no? yes. in the Philippines. Uh, are there any uh, proposal to change this slogan? I think it's being discussed right now. Do you have any idea on this already? Uh, for as long as the change would be for the better. And I, I think, uh, we should be receptive with that. Are there any uh, plans to change the allocations of this, uh, the 50 and then 40% for education and the 10% for the cultural? Are there any uh, proposals to change this so that more funds would be uh, given to tourist mm -hmm. infrastructure? Uh, two things. My belief is that travel tax should be fully treated as hypothecated tax. Yeah. It means that tax dedicated for a specific purpose. Uh, yeah. So when you say travel tax, the use of the travel tax should only for tourism related. That should be 100% for tourism. Yeah, that yeah. should be one. But was it created by law or to an executive order or the to the board only? The sharing scheme, uh, 95-40-10 uh, is provided for in 95-93. However, uh, we have created a technical working group uh, which work on certain amendments that we want to endorse to the board and hopefully for the board to endorse to the legislature. Yeah, I think that's the main problem because when you say travel tax, it should be very easy to understand. Travel yeah, tax right. simply means 
for infrastructure of tourism, yes. not for education. Yes. Anyway, education get the biggest chunk in the budget always on a year year basis. They are the biggest uh, in terms of allocation of government funds. Okay. Yet they still get some 40 percent coming from travel tax. So I think this should be tried to be amended so that it would be really for infrastructure of tourism. So we could see here all the different projects of uh, the TESA. And uh, I think the number one that you are developing is the, which you mentioned earlier, the 17 uh, kilometers. Are there any projects already there in that project? Uh, uh, infrastructure or hotels the or airports are being developed? The master planning of the whole area, we are set to bid out the study on water and uh, power. And uh, I think uh, the board has already approved about 340 million for just to jumpstart the San Vicente uh, flagship project. Uh, on behalf of Tax TV, we would like to thank you for sharing your time with us. And what is your final message to the Filipino people and, of course, to the foreign travelers? But we need to have focus on tourism development. We could develop tourism as the best destination in the Asian region, in Southeast Asia, and even in Asia Pacific. We have the resources. All we need to do is really come up with a plan that really be, that will really be pursued by by the different agencies, not only DOT, not only CESA, but every agency related in one way or the, the other to the yeah. development of the tourism industry should pitch in and give their share. DOT must harness tourism as an engine of investment, employment, growth, and natural development. Philippines as a new tourist destination 
in Asia will be a dream come true. Increase in tourist arrival will also mean increase in revenue for a lot of related and allied businesses in tourism and travel and would mean more jobs for Filipinos. Let us help build donation, give you share by paying your taxes correctly and promptly for a better tomorrow. Once again, I am Dr. Victor B. Endriga, and this is Tax TV, a taxpayer's guide to Philippine taxation. Thank you for watching. For comments, questions, and suggestions on our topic today, you may email us at taxTVPH at gmail.com. And Dr. Victor Indriga will gladly answer your queries.